Okay guys, what's going on? I'm um, just going to do some rose sketching. If you haven't read the description, you can go check it out. I was just having some technical difficulties with my headphones, as always. Apparently the jack inside the microphone that I'm using is actually burned out. So I want to do my best to make sure that you guys can hear me. Um, if for whatever reason the audio gets super weird, just let me know in the chat. I'm also streaming on Twitch as well, so if you prefer Twitch over YouTube, you can go check it out on Twitch. Or if you just want to follow me on Twitch, all the links to that are in the description of this video. Uh, vice versa as well for people viewing it on Twitch right now. Um, but yeah, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to sketch some roses. My buddy Ram sent me some reference photos actually from his garden. So they're going to be drawn from actual roses and been drawing with him a lot. And my buddy Maise at his shop, uh, at Ram Shop, and uh, was just doing some traditional stuff, getting back into doing tattoo flash. And he was telling me that it's good to learn some of those early on fundamental rose designs that people have done for years, but it's also really good to draw your own version from an actual real rose. It's a lot easier to kind of understand how the bends are going to be, where to put your shading, the highlights, all that stuff is super important. So we're gonna try it out. If uh, you're new to the channel and you haven't watched stuff before, you can actually, uh, I'll, I'll do a quick little, I guess, flip through of this sketchbook. I've drawn in this before um, on the YouTube channel. I've done some stuff on Twitch as well with this one. This is that giant 600 page sketchbook you'll probably see on Amazon all the time. I got it with the intent to do a drawing challenge to fill it up in a month. That has not happened, but now I use it to kind of just sketch things really quickly that I don't really, you know, care too much about, just to render ideas really fast and sort of have fun and do these drawing art streams with you guys. So we're going to open up to one of the pages here. So these are actually roses I've done in the past. If you guys have been following the channel for a while, you probably have watched the video of me drawing all these. I think this was actually when I was trying to do the uh, stream every single day for eight hours challenge, but YouTube didn't like me doing that. <laughs> Just kept shutting my videos down. Um, yeah, this is all I think from those challenges still. Yep, I remember the green pen now. Yeah, all the way up until here. I think I got it like two or three days I tried to do it, but yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot to do. But yeah, that's pretty much what's in this sketchbook so far. Just a bunch of sketches and studies of other other things, ideas that I've had, and I've just been kind of having fun with it. But some useful stuff in here that I could definitely design some cool flash with if I felt like it, and I might. So we're just gonna kind of go for it. We got two people viewing now, so someone on Twitch Hello, welcome someone on YouTube. Welcome guys, thank you for joining the stream. I didn't really know I was gonna stream today, I just decided to do it, I have a day off. So, we're gonna stream. Um, gotta also just update some stuff on here, so you guys probably haven't seen these yet, but we got some new subscribers. We just recently broke 850 on the page, so just give these guys a shout out as well. There's quite a few people on it, so. <laughs> Since the last live stream, I'll just do the stuff from the last couple days. Um, and then last week on Twitch, I had like a, a lot of people actually start following the channel, so that was awesome. Uh, looks like we got two people on YouTube now. Just giving all these shout outs. Cool. All right, so that's pretty much everyone uh, and shout it out, I might have accidentally did someone twice there. Let me pull up these reference images. I'm gonna ask Ram before I share these reference images because I'm not sure if he wants to keep them private or not. Um, he just told me I could use them to draw from. So I'm gonna do that, but if he's cool with it, I'll, I'll share these so you guys can actually check them out later on and see kind of how I approach this. It's just really simple. I'm not doing anything too crazy. I don't know, I'm talking too much for something really simple, but. <laughs> also, if you guys could like the video, um, that actually really helps the channel out a lot. 
every time someone likes the video, it definitely increases the metrics on the channel and allows more people to see it that aren't subscribed. And it's completely free to you. So if you like what you're seeing, definitely like the video. Uh, if you feel inclined to, please share it. That also really helps a lot. I know it's like uh, the the same routine you probably hear from every streamer is like, please share, like, and, and all that. But it does really help. It does create a pretty big impact on um, like the viewership of the channel. Usually once it gets past three or four likes and then all of a sudden i don't know what happens it just jumps up drastically for how many people are viewing on the stream it's kind of crazy actually i couldn't believe how much uh how much like viewership relies on that sometimes for people to actually see the video in the first place but normally i like plan the streams out and you guys know days in advance this is just kind of like a on a whim kind of thing but we're gonna sketch for a little bit. Um, probably get this first basic one done, kind of figured out. And then uh, I'll probably actually just take like a 10 or 15 minute break in between each one as more people can sort of show up. We're just gonna keep going off like the rest of the day. Just keep drawing them. I still have to do my ink drawing for today as well. So once I'm, if I finish all these really quickly, then I'm actually gonna do that on stream as well because you guys actually seem to really like the last one I did. And it was actually a lot of fun just having people to talk to. I did another live stream yesterday on Instagram with a buddy of mine, and that was actually really fun. So now all I'm doing, the photo resolution is a little hard to see from these references. So they're in an Instagram message that he sent him. So they're a little hard for me to see. I think if I had saved them and open no out somewhere else that might have been a better move but we're we're already going so it's fine it'll actually probably help with the overall look we're going for of something really simple and traditional but already i can kind of see what he was talking about how it's fine to use you know pre-existing flash that's been around forever but really drawing your own does allow you to kind of understand why they chose those those creative choices that they made you know on their in their design and and why it's important to really try to imitate from life even with something as simple as a traditional tattoo just gives you a much more realistic thing even though it's a simplified version of it so i think that's kind of cool and a lot of early traditional stuff um was definitely derivative of pre-existing illustration and art from you know all sorts of stuff advertisements uh, board games is a, a big one, which I think is really interesting. So yeah, I can kind of see some stuff. Some of the details are a little too distorted for me to like really render out and see clearly right now. I'll have to like zoom in somehow. But not bad. Also, the one thing about these sketchbooks, if uh, if you are thinking about picking one up, the paper is not good at all, in my opinion. I think it's some of the worst paper that you can use. I can't stand it, but I already have it, and I'm not going to waste 600 pages uh, just because I don't like the paper. But I do not like the paper. It takes me forever to warm up in these sketchbooks because the tooth is weird, and I feel like the pencil doesn't... I don't know. If you've ever used really crappy paper before, you probably know what I'm talking about. It just doesn't feel right. So that's why I like to do it for stuff like this where I'm drawing quickly. I don't really necessarily care how it comes out. I'm just drawing to draw to practice. And it's not, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if it's anything or not. If it is, great. If it's not, not a big deal. Double checking some stuff right here. Okay, nice. We got some. We got two likes. I'm just gonna double check the chat really quickly. Uh, I always do this because sometimes the chat does not work unless I initiate it for some reason. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. So it looks like that's showing up. Um, feel free to ask any questions. It doesn't have to be about this drawing. It can be about whatever. Um, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I feel weird talking about talking to myself, basically. <laughs> Always feel strange.
There we go. Oh wow, that's interesting. So the uh, the zoom feature that you normally can just do to increase the size of your screen does not work on Instagram. Uh, it makes everything bigger, but the photo stays the same size. So that's interesting. I didn't realize that. <laughs> But I guess that's probably to help prevent people from trying to steal stuff or screenshot it at a larger size. Okay, that looks pretty good so far. And I still don't even know what people uh, prefer as far as the streaming stuff goes. One week people will say that they like Twitch more and then others uh, it, it'll always be YouTube. So I'm trying to do the dual stream stuff, but I think the quality is brought down quite a bit from it, just from my internet connection being really crappy here. So I would like to try to have a consistent schedule um, for both platforms because it's still so back and forth of like what people prefer. But if you guys do have uh, any input on that, definitely let me know why you like one over the other. Um, Twitch, I tend to have more issues with actually lately. I feel like it just lags a lot. It's not as responsive um, as YouTube is for me, but that could just be, again, my connection. I know a lot of people don't seem to have as many issues with Twitch, but I tend to run into them for whatever reason. And this is like another interesting thing too about these leaves. So most traditional roses, they have really exaggerated leaves and uh, oh, looks like we lost some power. Hang on a second, sorry guys. Should be, should be running in just a second. And that is like super washed out. So if you guys can't even see the drawing, please let me know in the future. That's uh, that sucks. Let me uh, let me fix that really quickly. I'm sorry about that, guys. I had no idea that was happening. Um, just gonna zoom in a little bit. There we go. Hopefully, you guys can see that a little bit better. I can sketch with a darker pencil if you can't see. I just always sketch in red out of habit. Uh, let me reduce this light too. I don't need it that bright. If that does happen, though, guys, um, and you're having a hard time seeing. Just let me know, because I don't always see see that, because I'm just drawing. You know what I mean? So it's not really something I think about too, too often. And then I'll just like adjust the light so it's not as harsh, hopefully. And see if that helps kind of frame the light. All right. There we go. Hopefully that's better for you guys. <laughs> It is also really early on in the day. I just have today off, so I figured I would I would stream right now. I know a lot of people probably are working, which is awesome. Um, I, I am currently not for the next few days. My hours have been pretty drastically reduced and it's just like a, a lot a lot to deal with. <laughs> so I'm also, uh, I'm gonna take some creative liberties with these, I'm gonna add stylistic things to these to make them more appealing in my opinion as roses as far as the leaves go i guess actually you know what why don't i just start by drawing them first and then once they're drawn i can make those decisions afterwards so that way i can at least get the foundation how it should be and the color and stuff too would be actually really nice to render out just this paper really sucks and I don't want to try to like render a full colored version on here. I think it's just not going to work out if I do that. It's just too much going on.
so the one thing on uh, real rows actually that's a little hard to illustrate in something like a tattoo design with a bolder line are the thorns and that's why they're typically pretty exaggerated and the leaves as well so like that that's one of the things that you'll see a lot in the traditional designs they're gonna have some things that just don't occur naturally and that's just sort of to kind of illustrate the fact that they exist people know what a leaf looks like they fill in the details and then as long as it's close enough to the actual design itself or like what an actual leaf looks like it helps quite a bit all right so we got one weird little curly one on the, the stem itself here there's a lot of thorns on these so i'm just going to do my best to kind of illustrate that so really fine ones. In some roses, they actually have really pronounced thorns that you can actually see really easily. And they're actually really, really frustrating to, <laughs> to deal with. I used to be a floral assistant, which is basically an assistant to a florist doing like arrangements and things like that. So you used to have to uh, dethorn roses all the time. And all you use is a staple remover. At least that's what we use when we're trained to use was a staple remover and you just run it along the entire stem and it rips all the thorns off. Ooh. Excuse me, sorry about that. Okay, that's pretty good. I guess I'm not gonna go super detailed with some of these things here. There are other roses in this photo because it's of a rose bush, but this is a great one to start with at least. Just kind of draw those going off in the background. I could draw some more roses if I felt like it, but I think let's just get this one going and then we'll actually move on from there. Okay, not bad. There's like a leaf down here that's doing some weird stuff because it's turned. And that's the stuff right there I think that's important to see because you wouldn't really think of that if you were to just draw a leaf. You're gonna draw it in the simplest way possible. You're not gonna think of all these weird bends that a plant's gonna naturally take. So yeah, big thanks to, to Ram for recommending this. He's a phenomenal tattooer, great skateboarder, really cool dude. And this is definitely already, I'm seeing how this is super helpful already just from messing around. All right, so that's pretty good. Now this doesn't really have many leaves that you can really see. So we're gonna add a few. We're just gonna add a leaf up here, I guess, to kind of give it a bit more composition. And then we're gonna change this leaf probably to go upward. So I'm gonna to try to draw some of the leaves that are in here in this photo and just place them here instead of just making them up in my head so I have something to sort of reference. And this is a traditional design, it's not a realistic one. If this was a realistic kind of black and gray style thing, I'd probably do this way differently of how I'm sketching. Actually take the time to get the proportions a lot more accurate than they are. But this is, again, this is just to do a traditional design. All right, so that leaf looks okay there. And then there's actually another one that's like perfect. So we're gonna just bring that stem out just a bit. This is also a great way if you're someone that's trying to get into illustration and you're worried about having a style don't necessarily worry about having the style. In my opinion, I don't think I, I actually even have a style. People say that I do, but I don't notice it at this point because I don't pay attention to it and it's not that important to me anymore. But if you uh, draw things from life and you draw them realistic or as realistic as you, you need them to be to get the point across of the form and then you start tweaking it, that's the best way to really figure out what your style is because you know what it's supposed to look like and then you have the basic structure of it. That's when you start tweaking the elements to better fit what you want it to look like. So it's all just an experimental process. And that's how you're going to really have the most leaps and bounds when it comes to finding 
I guess, your style uh, for, like, honestly, a lack, true lack of better terminology <laughs> for that because it's just kind of like a, I don't know, people put way too much weight on that, finding a style. I think it's kind of ridiculous. Okay. All right, so we got the basic fundamental stuff down. Now, this pencil's a little bit darker. You might be able to see it better. Um, I'm going to check with the blue pencil, though, really quick, just in case. All right, yeah, you're not going to see the blue one. So normally I would go over this again with, like, another colored pencil, or I'd start with the blue and then sketch over in the red. But that's all right. We're going to do... Uh, we're gonna do what we can with this. I think I have a darker red or like more of an orange. This is just to kind of separate some of the details and get some of the more definite lines that I know I'm gonna be using in this design. Now, because a lot of the traditional stuff is heavily reliant on line work versus just the shading itself, to give you the image, I'm gonna make sure that I get the lines as clean as I can and really just know which lines I'm gonna take on this design. So I got a nice curve here. Now this is where one of those stylistic choices can go where I can either shade it with a different color or I can make a hard line here to really indicate that this little edge is curled over. And when I go to use the black, that'll probably show up a lot better. We have this weird kind of bulbous thing happening on this leaf. There's a bit of a split on the leaf. So you can kind of see in here this would be something that you could do with the shading. And this kind of also helps really give it that folding in effect. And then you just kind of blend it out. And with a pencil, it would take me a little bit longer than I, <laughs> I want to spend on trying to render that out right now. We're just trying to get this the simple thing figured out and then we'll actually move on to the next rows and then if you guys stick around if enough people show up we'll uh we'll pause the stream like i said every every couple roses or every rose take a 15 minute guys go get something to drink draw <laughs> ask questions whatever you want uh there's also there should be a link to the discord server if you guys want to go check that out so on the Discord, there's a lot of really cool things that we have going on there with a small art community forming of just people of all different skill sets and all different facets of art. It's been really cool seeing some of the stuff that people have been putting on there. It's been a little bit slow lately just because I haven't been uploading as much and I haven't been doing live streams at convenient enough times. And sorry for all the noises, I do live in a city I'm on the first floor of an apartment building and you occasionally get those noises from <laughs> everything that's going on inside. So the recycling's here today and they're always super loud, and super noisy. And my street is packed full of apartments, so please bear with me while <laughs> while that goes uh that goes by. That was sick. We just got another viewer on YouTube. Welcome. Okay. Yeah, so some of these like fine details back here, the photo's a little too blurry for me to see. Uh, clearly to really know what the information is going to read as. So I'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible. And if I, I need to make tweaks on the design because of that, I can. This one's got another curling leaf that's pretty subtle and it gets a little bit more intense. So we'll just kind of taper that in. We'll shoot this out. Bring that around. Yeah, and if, uh, like I said, if you guys are just joining the video, definitely make sure to like or leave a comment if you want. Join the chat. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that overall sort of design. Now we're gonna get into tweaking the details to make it more like an actual tattoo design. So one of the things that I like to do is figure out the type of thorn I'm gonna do. 
I'll sketch two little thorns that I typically do. We have your classic kind of hook thorn like that. It wraps around, there's a line to kind of indicate it's on the stem like that. So it's a little more detail than I probably want to do for this design. Another one of mine that I like to do, not mine, but another style I like to do are these just little tapering lines that go off of the stem. I think these look really nice. It gives it a nice kind of clean feel to it and just helps the flow and direction of the design. And they usually always go in one direction. So that's why I like them. They're always pointing up for the most part. On the bottom where it's cut, I usually just do something simple. Kind of that hook thing you can add little details if you want like this little tapered edge here it's like if uh, one of the fibers or something were to curl I imagine that's where that actually comes from with these rose designs of how they were cut if they were cut with the a shear it's not as clean or not sharp enough that's what that little weird blunted lump would be on a rose when you cut it just because the the stems are actually really strong so if you cut it with something that's not sharp enough you're not going to get a clean cut through it at all it's actually going to like kind of nub the bottom like that so i'm assuming that's actually where those details came from is someone that just cut a rose and that's just kind of became a stylistic thing and the thorns i try to keep them fairly random i don't want them to be exactly the same throughout because they're not on an actual rose they're incredibly random there's no real rhyme or reason to how they they grow on there they just do and they do grow all the way up the rows so from like the base of the stem on most roses all the way up they tend to be a lot more dense on these really tiny tiny ones on this style of rose or this type of rose they uh tend to be much smaller and a lot more dense towards the top usually when there's like a joint in the plant where another stem will be growing off of it that's where you'll see less of these like tiny little thorns and prickly bits. All right, and then for this leaf here, I do like how this looks, but on most traditional designs for that type of leaf, they're drawn like that. We're gonna keep some of these details though. I do like that kind of weird curling effect this thing was doing. I think that's kind of a cool thing. Um, and then we're going to draw this little lump in here to kind of show that it's got those little folds. This one as well. We're drawing this line here, and then the shading is going to be on the inside. So it makes it look like the leaf is curled. That's a lot simpler than rendering it out with just shading. All right, not bad. I think that's actually pretty good. Nice and simple. Doesn't have to always be overly detailed. Um, that's that's a big problem of mine with when I do anything I always add too much detail that doesn't really need to be there to convey the story or the visual representation of whatever it is that I'm drawing especially in like a tattoo design just some of this stuff doesn't necessarily help it or make it even a better tattoo if it's crushed with detail and that's just stuff that I'm learning um, from just talking with other artists and and seeing what they're saying and then actually trying to apply it to my approach to stuff, I, I do actually see a massive uh, improvement and better understanding of why certain things are done the way they're done or why they were done the way they were done for a lot of these traditional designs that a lot of people have probably lost or forgotten the reason of why they do these things. And I think that's kind of cool, actually. So I know a lot of tattooers that we're doing what I were doing was doing, you know, where they would just uh, 
they draw and reference things from the past and they learn those little details and elements and not understand necessarily why they exist just know that they're a part of the, the classic design and i definitely can see why drawing a real rose and then making it a traditional design is super helpful Now this is another one of those things right here where I could choose to either spend the time on this and shade it out when I go to do like the digital version or paint it, or I just leave it really simplified. But because this is like a really dark shadow on this side, kind of gives you that look fold and the leaf and there's like a bit of a highlight right here and up into here, there's a fold on this leaf and it actually kind of curls around this other one. So those are all just going to be things I have to figure out what I'm going to do as I do it, I think. Okay, it's not bad. Comes from there. I like to talk to myself when I draw, so if you guys aren't going to talk to me, you'll have to deal with me talking to myself. <laughs> All right, not bad. Whoever's on Twitch right now watching, thank you for hanging around. I do really appreciate that. That's awesome. And everyone that's watching on YouTube too, that's great. Thank you guys. <laughs> Gonna check the stats on the video in just a second when I'm uh when I get a second. All right. looking pretty good so far I'm actually pretty happy with this I think um, a few other little details I can pop in here now this is the edge of the flower that I can't really see in the photo it's just really blurred so it's a little hard to kind of see any edges that I can turn into def like a definite line or anything like that so we're just gonna keep it nice and simple Just gonna double check some stuff real quick. Let's check the uh, video. Okay, nice. We got four likes on the video. That's awesome. Thank you guys. Really do appreciate that. Looks pretty good. All right, so that's kind of what I can see right now. I'm not sure how well that's picking up on the camera, but see that's really simple so far uh, without the shading. And that's actually what I kind of want. Now this leaf here, I'm gonna actually keep it a little bit more realistic. We're gonna add a few things to kind of show that it's curling. We're going to make this bump up and down a bit to kind of give it more of that effect. Now this is where I'm stylizing everything to give it the look I want it to have for a traditional design. Now a lot of leaves like this are typically they're like the three. Go up here, you know, stuff like this. They'll have a bunch of lines going towards the center. Although you like the diamond tips like I did in the other design the other day. But I'm pretty happy with how this looks. I don't think I really need to add that many other details to it. You know what I mean? So I think I'm going to leave that as is. Um, just checking one thing real quick. Sorry, guys. Yes, yeah, so I think that's going to be what that is for now for this design. So we're going to just do some quick little uh, little drawings over this again and see how we can refine it. Or if you wanted to, you could actually just move on to the inking stage with, you know, let's just do that. And then we'll take a quick little break so you guys can chill. If uh, you have any questions you want to ask or it doesn't have to be about this, it can be about whatever. All right, let's see. I'm trying to think of like something I could sketch over this pit, like really crappy paper with without destroying it too much. That's why I really don't like this because it can't handle a lot of uh, a lot of media on top of it without really starting to get extra crappy. It's a little too much. 
I guess the soft pencil, yeah. Maybe the soft pencil will be a little bit better and get some ideas rendered out. Let's see. Let's find a good inking pen that's not gonna be too bad for this paper. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna find one. All right, well the back page is gonna get decimated, so that's fine. Okay. Sorry guys, all the noise, I'm dropping stuff everywhere. I had to rearrange my bedroom to sort of fit some more things in here and try to help with uh, the space situation I got going on. But it's definitely making it a lot harder for certain things to easily be moved around. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna go with the Sharpie now. I'm gonna pull up the reference again, one second. Okay. And we're just going to line this the best we can. This paper is really crappy, so the lines are going to look kind of blown out. So just bear with me as I try to figure this out. Should I do it in a way that doesn't really make the lines look too bad? That's going to be done with the shading in there, so I'm just going to leave that weird little uh, dark line that's going down the middle. I'm just going to let that be determined by the shading to create that highlight in there. It's a little sculpted. Now that we have another highlight point here with the dark line, I'm not gonna really go down too much. I'm gonna accentuate it a little bit just so I can kind of remember. There's another one there. Then we have sort of this weird folded up section here, which this is another one of those things where you can kind of do what you need to do to make it have the look you want. I'm going to bring the curls of this inward instead of the way that they're going. They're actually uh, in the opposite direction, which I think is kind of weird. But I don't think that's going to read the way I need it to to come across that way. So we're going to probably get rid of this section when we blend into the black. It was like a little mistake there. It does happen. And normally if I were to do this as like an actual design, if someone like asked me or tried to commission me to do a design for them, this would be a much more rendered out drawing, substantially more rendered out, probably like six revisions of it just to make sure that it's, it's right if I were commissioned to do something like that. All right, so that looks pretty good. Let me get this other leaf up here. Can't forget that one. Little line in there, there's a leaf behind. I'm gonna make that one solid black. Looks pretty good. And I'll just add like a few of these little uh sort of detail lines to kind of give the leaf some direction.
Yeah, towards the bottom here too, it's a little like wonky, but that's fine. Again, this is just a little practice sketch. Nothing super crazy that I need to do render out. Got 10 more of these to go, so that's fine. That's not bad. I think that's a little bit better. We're gonna erase some of this stuff and see what we can actually kind of shade in there now with a pencil that we got like the sketch down. And I'm just gonna use a soft pencil to kind of get my point across a little bit easier. So we have a fairly big shadow coming in from this side. Kind of tapers in. There's a bit of a highlight on the edge. It's not bad. I think this pencil is a little too sharp. Oh, we got a GoPro outage again. Sorry, guys. Now this graphite's not going to look as dark as the black is, and they're totally different values of a shade. So just keep that in mind. If there, this were done in ink or watercolor, where there's a level of consistency used in the medium, you wouldn't have these weird sort of uh, striations of color like this. It would just be a lot more consistent, and it would just look a lot more natural. But because we're just doing a quick little sketch and a study, it doesn't necessarily need to be rendered to perfection like that. So we're not gonna worry about it. We're just gonna we're just gonna say fuck it and we're gonna go for it. That's where the highlight is. Now this side is substantially lighter because it's the light source is hitting on this side a little bit more. But you can use your shadows if you're doing like rough stuff like this. Uh, even with an ink or watercolor, you can actually kind of define it by giving your shadows a bit more of a direction. You gotta see that these are angled inward and that's like the point that they're meeting. Right there, there's still a highlight in there. These edges are a little dark. That's just my fault from how I'm rendering it. Uh, I don't have one of those like little cheap blending nubs, but that's kind of what you would use for this just to kind of do it quicker and not like care so much. I don't really care how it comes out, but I, it's just like a thing you would do to get that effect. I'll just do a little bit of a shadow underneath here. And then you would blend it and, and all that. On this side, we have a leaf behind a leaf. So that's where it gets shaded. We have a heavy highlight here, but then we have a shadow in here. So a little bit in there. Along this side, it's pretty common sense uh, about where you would put shadows and things like that on a traditional design. If something's behind something, there's a shadow. You know, that's a fairly basic and simple drawing drawing rule across the board, anyway, with a lot of this stuff. So, shouldn't it be <laughs> any surprise or anything like that. I guess. I don't know, man. And then these dark corners, the way that they uh, show up on the photo, they kind of point like outward, if that makes sense. And then there's the, like the light that's hitting behind it. So that's 
why it's kind of cast in a weird shadow like that. It's kind of cool though. It's a nice little effect. And then again, we have like another weird situation with really hard light. Okay. So that. Yeah, I wish I had something that was closer to the the same black as the Sharpie. It would definitely read a lot better than what <laughs> this is, but I think overall though it's not bad. I think it's getting some of the point across. All right, guys, that's pretty good. I'm gonna take a quick little break though. Um, I will be back. I'm just gonna put this on pause and yeah, I'll be right back. Hopefully more people can join.
Okay, we are back. Sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah, so we got everything kind of back and ready to go. The camera keeps getting all kind of funky. Let me just fix that real fast. So basically what we're going to do next. So I got to draw another rose, but I actually found a rose that's a little bit better than the rose I was using in the first reference. So we're going to work with that one instead. Let me just fix this camera situation. I'm sorry, guys. Just a second. <clears throat> so this rose is a little bit closer up. It's a little bit easier to see. It's got more defined details that I can turn into lines and kind of do some better shading. So we're going to do two versions. The first version we're going to make a bit more realistic. And then the next one we're going to do more of a traditional styled one. And then I think after that, we're going to check the time, see where we're at, and if I feel like it, I'll actually do the uh, ink drawing of the day live. <clears throat> but usually for that stuff, I like to try to get the audience up a little bit more, just because it's kind of, I don't know, it's, it's actually not easy drawing in front of people on the internet. I don't know, it's just not, <laughs> it's not like a normal thing a lot of people do, but doesn't really, it hasn't gotten easier for me yet. All right. Yeah, and whoever's watching on Twitch, thank you. I do really appreciate that. It's awesome. I've been sticking around the whole time, even through my absurdly long 15 minute break. <clears throat> and whoever's on YouTube watching, thank you. Um, okay. Let's just get back to that page. Now you can see a lot of these other drawings on here are a lot more rendered out. And that's just because I've had the time to do it. So it's not like something I've, I've thought about. We're doing these roses kind of quick, but you can see these are like really sloppy and how I, I sketch in here. It's nothing in here is ever a, a finalized piece. So it doesn't necessarily matter to me as much. All right, <clears throat> enough ranting. Let's get this rose going. And again, these roses are from photographs. They're not from pre-existing tattoo flash from anyone. They're actually being drawn directly from a photograph of a real rose to try to help kind of better understand how certain stylistic characteristics are taken when drawing a traditional rose. I guess that's the easiest way to put it. But I think you guys have been the same people that have been sticking around since the beginning, so. No point to uh, tell you that again, but just for anyone that might be showing up just right now. I also need to check the, um, sorry, let me check the Twitch chat right now because they're on separate, uh, separate things completely. <laughs> and I don't think the, uh, I don't think the chat lets me see back and forth of like what's what. Um. <clears throat> It does not. All right, that's, here we go. Let me go on the multi-stream, see if that'll work. Okay, chat red onlys. Uh, I don't know if there's a way for me to communicate with Twitch right now, so if you guys are on Twitch communicating, I'm sorry, I can't do anything about that. It just doesn't let me, uh, doesn't let me see that. Oh, here we go. All right. Cool. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so yeah, we're good to go. I'm drawing this rose also massive right now, um, just to kind of, I don't know, cause I can, and it doesn't really matter. <laughs> this is no one in their right mind would get a rose like this, this big ever, but I'm just gonna draw it. So that's fine. Yeah, I also did not do any like social media reach out stuff. I think there's like the auto feature to post to Twitter or something, but I think I have five followers on, on Twitter. Like 
I've had Twitter for years, but I just never post on there. So I just, I don't, I don't know. I think Twitter is kind of like annoying personally. At least a lot of the things I'm seeing on Twitter just like make me annoyed. So I just don't like to use it. Whereas this, you know, Instagram is more visual based anyway, and Twitter is more complaining based, I feel like. So that's why I don't use it, but I know people do love it. So I have a, I do have a Twitter. I don't post on there, but, um, I'm starting, I'm trying to, to get into it. I have a TikTok as well. I've made one video as cringy as possible just to see how it would react on there surprisingly well. Um, so I, I will eventually try to get more into TikTok, but TikTok is just like, I have so many other things I got to do and I just, I don't have enough time in the day to make content specifically for TikTok unless it's intentionally really funny or dumb. I guess that's kind of the point of TikTok anyway, but <clears throat> I don't know. I still feel weird about that one too. TikTok's a weird one. All right, so now I'm just drawing all the the different leaf or petal, not leaves, uh, different petal details just because I can. I'm going to maybe spend a bit more time on this one than the last one just to kind of get all the structural pieces I need before I start stylizing it out. So we'll draw it in this red and hopefully you guys can see it a little bit better than before. I want to lighten this again. Sorry, it's probably still too dark. That helps at all. I don't know. It just doesn't really seem to help. Does that help? Make it like a weird, gross, warm light that I don't even want to be around. It doesn't help. None of it helps. <laughs> All right. Well, regardless, I'm drawing these leaves in now, and you'll see why in a little bit. Uh, like the things I'm doing now will make more sense, hopefully. And you could also like grid this out. You could make this a bit more realistic if you wanted to. You could do all sorts of things that I'm not doing. This is just, again, a bit of a study, not something that I would make into a painting or an actual design. But just trying to get like the basic principles down and figure it out, I think, is super important. Right. Now, right here, we actually have an interesting thing because the leaves are curling outward from the center here. There's actually a really intense convex curve that goes all the way around that goes down into the rest of the rows. Now that's something that you again could do in shading to kind of illustrate that, but it depends how realistic you want the rows to be, how much time you want to spend on detailing this thing out. And typically the approach is to simplify it and you just do a, a sharp line here and then you shade up from there. So again, that's just a stylistic approach. Uh, we're going to make this a little bit more realistic by following the photo. And then I'm going to sketch dark lines so you can see it. And then we're going to change those dark lines to either make it more traditional if I don't like how the more realistic version looks. I don't know. It's all up in the air. It's all for fun. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. All right. We have this other leaf down here. So I'm just, yeah, I'm just going along. I'm not really thinking too much about the design. <laughs> it's just going to be fun. So we got this. Now, it's good to actually take note of where these leaves are. So this, see this connecting point here? So this is actually the same petal pretty much all the way up. So there's two petals here. I mean, meet right at this top little peak and they kind of curl over into each other. So this back petal here, this one goes above it. It's a bit more rounded. It's got a very sharp defined fold in there and then goes into a bit more of a convex because we have a highlight that's really bright. That's because this part of the leaf, or sorry, the petal is curling. And that's why it's got this weird little bulge. 
So I think that's kind of an interesting thing. Like you wouldn't think of that really normally. Um, when you look at a traditional design, you just like think it's a weird shape that someone chose to draw, but most likely they drew from an actual rose and they chose those stylistic details on purpose. So that's kind of like the whole point of trying to get across with this, this live stream. <laughs> Said it a lot, so hopefully you guys get it, but it is important to do drawings from life, even with something as simple as like traditional tattoo flesh. Yeah, the proportions are definitely off too <laughs> in this drawing just because I didn't really plan it <clears throat> and sketch it loose with the shapes. I just started drawing. Uh, I do that a lot actually. It's a really bad habit. I just kind of get into the drawing and I don't really care what it's going to come out like. So that's not a good approach when it comes to just like doing a study, even though it's not important at the end of the day. It's important enough to make sure that you actually are practicing in a way that's helpful for you to learn something. But this is just kind of more of like a therapeutic thing for me when I do that. And that's why I don't care as much because it's just kind of as a, a thing to do to just relax and not really think about needing to make something constantly, you know, all the time that's perfect. But uh, if you're trying to learn or to do studies, that's not a good habit to have because you're not actually, you're not doing the work at that point. You're you're half-assing the work and you're not actually gonna get a result that's super helpful. You know what I mean? It's it's just, you gotta put the time in to make it actually look good. But we're just here having fun, so I guess it's not too big a deal. If I actually were to do a live process, I wouldn't be able to talk and really interact in the same way. Not that you guys probably want to hear my voice anyway, but <laughs> you're stuck with it. Uh, but that's, yeah, I would just be way too focused on the drawing to actually talk. I would zone out, wouldn't even realize that I was filming or what I was doing. I'd probably do all sorts of like weird, embarrassing stuff, not even thinking about it. Like everyone does <laughs> when they forget they're being filmed or don't know they're being filmed. Right, and that's kind of a, uh, yeah, that's this basic shape of this rose. There's a big petal here that's a little hard to see. Looks a little weird. But yeah, that's actually what this rose looks like. And it does look kind of weird. It doesn't really look like a traditional rose, just the line drawings. Let's draw some of those leaves in actually that are in this. So this one's got like a weird little bend in it. It's kind of cool actually. I like, I like some of these leaves that I'm drawing. I do like how, how simple they actually really are in real life, that they don't really need all those extra details. It's just kind of to add to the design, I guess, and maybe the composition of it. All right, that looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that. All right, that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna go with a slightly darker color. We're gonna, so you guys can still see stuff. But it does not look, maybe 
why don't I draw this like kind of opaque gray and see if you guys can see that a little bit better. And just hopefully it's it's not too dark. That's pretty dark. All right, you guys can kind of, you can basically see the rose design. I'm not gonna go super dark on this. We're just gonna keep it pretty simple. Again, just whatever we can do, right? There's also some damage on these petals. That's a realistic thing that you can add. You can add these lines here to kind of indicate direction if it's like a Neo Trad design. <clears throat> a little bit better. Not the not the greatest, not the worst, but somewhere in between that. <laughs> And I'm just kind of changing a few things as I see some uh, some things kind of standing out to me on this design. This is why you normally do like a second sketch. This is why you use tracing paper when you're doing it by hand. Um, so you can kind of see those things and make those decisions on the tracing paper. All right, I'm almost uh, happy with this actual design. I think a few more little details here and there and it's pretty much good to go as far as the line work goes. I'm trying to keep it a little bit more minimalized than what I've been doing. Sorry, I feel like I'm, I'm sounding really repetitive right now. I just don't know what to say when I'm just drawing. Sometimes I feel weird. I feel like I need to be talking on these streams, but probably don't. Probably don't even need the microphone at this point if there's no one really engaging, but we'll keep it on, we'll keep it going. And then just the small little details inside this, this rose. And we can't really see into that part of the rose, so that's kind of fine. Just to kind of have those doing whatever. But you can kind of see that's the general shape of this rose now. We have the basic form. We have all these things that look very detailed right now when you're looking at it. And that's one of the things you can adjust. So we're going to use this brush pen. It's a decent amount of gray in this. You can build it up to a darker tone. Careful with it. But we're going to try to just block in some grays and some shadows and kind of illustrate how this sort of pertains to what I've been talking about and what I'm learning from uh, actually doing this and just the things I'm learning from just thinking about this differently are it's kind of crazy actually uh, I feel kind of dumb for not really realizing this sooner but that's the benefit of having other creative friends is that they can kind of show you like oh hey like try it like this you know like you might actually 
learn something from just not approaching something the, the way you always approach it. All right, so just blocking it. Now this is just gonna be like some gray on top of this so you guys can kind of see uh, some of the stuff. I'm just gonna add some direction lines with the gray too in here. It's just a little too dark, but what are you gonna do? Missed the line. That's why it looked weird. That one line there, that's so the whole thing looked strange. I swear. They do make a blender version of this uh, type of marker, but I just don't have one anymore. I think I ran out forever ago and just stopped really using them. So I never really thought to kind of get a blender again, but these uh, little Tombow brush pens are actually really great if you want to get into doing sort of that classic flash look and doing that stuff. You can actually use um, one of those like little blenders to actually blend this stuff out really, really easily. I do want to eventually get back into doing more that, a bit more like Neo Trad stuff, but it's just a lot of materials. It's expensive and I don't know. Now that I can do pretty much all that same stuff on the iPad and I don't have to, you know, invest in like weird things like silk dye and, and all that to get just really specific effects that I'm not going to use all the time in my personal style. I think these will be fine to use <laughs> for all that. Now I'm trying to also just capture these bigger shadows that are really dark. So I know that's what they're gonna be. I would only blend this out and be able to see this a little bit better. But you see how this curved line kind of lets you know that this has a convex shape on it? That's why you would do that line. Oh man, I just realized I missed the rest of two leaves actually. So that's another thing. Because <laughs> the pencil is so light, I can't even see it myself. There it is, okay. I thought this was going to be a little bit easier to kind of <laughs> explain, but it's actually a little bit harder now that I'm looking at it to actually get the point across because this is just too dark of a gray to lay down a little bit and really blend out a, a nice fade or something. But I hope the concept makes more sense at least um, to just use real life images to reference things, even if they're like rudimentary designs for things like tattoo flash or vectors or anything like that. Any you know, of that stuff. Okay, I'm gonna actually grab some markers real quick and see if we can just use those to blend because I don't think this is gonna work uh, the way I thought it would on this crappy paper. Thank you. 
We're gonna use a cool gray. I'm gonna see if it'll actually let me blend out with just this one. All right. Yeah, we might be able to get a bit of a blend. One's water-based, one's alcohol-based, or like has a special solvent in it. That's what makes these other ones blend. Yeah, so that's, that's not gonna blend the way I intended it, but that's okay. We can just uh, use this marker and get slightly darker over it. That's way too dark. <laughs> All right, I already messed it up, but that's okay. <laughs> Got the wrong marker. Um, yeah, so that's, that happens too, I guess. But basically, this is the underside of a leaf here. We're gonna blend that out. I really only need the two. I don't need something that dark. This, I don't even think this paper is gonna be able to handle yeah, it's already getting chewed up. This paper really does suck. It's some of the worst paper I've ever used. The ballpoint pen's not bad on it. Anything else? I'm already tearing through the paper. I'm not gonna be able to do this. This is frustrating, actually. Okay. Awesome, man. Th thanks, yeah, welcome to uh Welcome to the channel. <laughs> I'm sorry, this video. Cool. All right, so we got the little rose there. We got that stuff going on. That already looks better. I'm sketching it smaller and faster, not thinking about it. And it's a lot more rendered to the point where I know what I need to put in here to make it look the way I need it to look. I'm gonna pull up some other reference images really fast. Just gonna check. And just a little status update on the video. Let's see. Doing pretty good actually. We got a decent amount of likes on there. So five likes, thank you guys. Do really appreciate that. It looks like we lost some viewership. Uh -oh. Could be cutting out. We're dropping a, we're dropping a lot of frames here. It's not too big a deal. Um, I'm just gonna do some other stuff real fast on here and then I'm just gonna end the video once I'm done inking. So should be pretty simple, should be fun. I'm gonna close this real quick and just yeah we're just gonna keep it simple
I think I'm gonna do like a weird cobra in the mood to draw one of those. So. All right, so sketching really quick. See, that's what I was talking about. I'll just start to zone out and I won't even, I won't notice. So that does happen to me all the time.
All right, not bad on that one. Um, guess we'll throw in some other weird stuff. Let's throw in an eyeball real quick, because why not? Now, normally I only give myself an hour to do these drawings completely from sketch to inking, so I don't want to add so much that I have to kind of worry about it. They all typically have some sort of movie theme, but I don't have a movie in mind that's got a Sid Cobra in it and an eyeball. So we're gonna just draw whatever we feel like drawing. Um, probably do like a little dagger. I think that'll fit actually really nicely with the rest of this kind of drawing here. Some of this stuff is just from my head. It's not referenced, so it's gonna have some some quirkiness to it probably. I guess it's the politest way to put it. It's gonna look bad, but that's kind of the point um, of me doing this whole challenge is to make stuff that doesn't have to be final finished work, that sort of thing. I can just kind of make stuff for the sake of making stuff. I just need to check the YouTube connection real quick to make sure there's not an issue. So sorry about the little fast zone out there. That's that's how I draw. If I'm gonna focus on something, that's how I do it. Sometimes I just get so drawn into it, I don't even realize I'm doing it. Um, yeah, I think we got enough on here. We're just gonna ink and have fun right now. Not worry about it. And then uh, we're gonna call it a day for that. And tomorrow, we'll see, I'll do something else. And remember, the idea is to ink it as quickly as possible, not treat this thing like it's a finalized piece or something precious that needs to be perfect, but I can still just have kind of fun with it. So we will do the roses again. I think I just, I'd be better off just drawing them ahead. It's kind of boring and takes a long time for me to sketch them accurately. Just there's a lot of details on there that when I, uh, I do that stuff. So just want to make sure I can have them ready to go next time and I'll just paint them. But we'll do what we're doing here with all the inking and stuff. Um, yeah, should be good. I do wanna do some other videos like I was doing before when there's a lot more people involved and kinda of just hanging out, drawing, making art, whatever it is. Just gotta figure out a schedule again. It's more consistent. And also anyone that's uh, recently followed on YouTube or Twitch that's watching. Thank you guys so much. I do really appreciate it. Um, the YouTube stuff has been great. I'm still very new to Twitch. Uh, there's nine followers now on Twitch, which is cool. Uh, that's a lot more than I thought I was going to ever get on that platform. So that's pretty sweet. I do 
I think that's pretty wild. I've just been doing like kind of games on there. I don't have a proper setup to stream like an actual game or anything on that, but I'll just play whatever I feel like it and and broadcast it. I don't put a mic in or anything. I don't have a webcam going or I do it because I feel like doing it. If you guys want to check that out, that's uh that's mainly what I've been using Twitch for just because setting this up for art on Twitch is just next to impossible. funky eyeball
All right, guys, I'm kind of tired. I'm almost done, but after this one, I think I'm just going to chill for the rest of the night. I didn't sleep last night. And just went on a really long walk, like at like 4.30 a.m. I walked around for a couple hours just to try to like wear myself out, but just could not sleep. And I'm still kind of like a little groggy. I feel like I'm drawing and literally dozing off, so that's not really a good good thing to do on a live stream. <laughs> but I might just go chill and play some games or something in a second, just because it's the, it's a lot to uh, lot to deal with right now. I'm just kind of really burned out. But tomorrow I think will be a lot better. I'll actually be able to sleep tonight, which will be good because I'm so exhausted. And I think uh, I'll actually paint some flash. Yeah, this one's actually pretty fast. I think we're gonna have this one done in like under under 20 minutes, I think. That's why I need a moderator. If anyone wants to vol volunteer to moderate videos, <laughs> let me know. Sword, the little rose thing, some other things with the skull, maybe. That's all I need sometimes. Uh, Kobe's looking pretty bad, but I think if I do a few things, it won't be the worst Kobe.
All right, guys, that's, uh, that's the fast ink drawing for today. I think that's the fastest one yet. It's, I still think underneath a half hour from a quick little sketch to a little marker. I guess, you know what, let's, uh, let's put one thing up here. Let's put a lurker up here. Perfect. All right, so that's yeah, that's it. It's a fun little one. Um, I'm really, really tired. Thank you to everyone that actually came to watch the stream. Sorry I'm so burned out and super weird. This drawing challenge has been fun, but I'm just not motivated enough to like draw anything crazy today. So it is what it is. But that's gonna do it for today's stream. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, as always. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel so. <laughs>